Welcome to the Understanding Asthma Research video series brought to you by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America's Paper Project, promoting asthma, patient engagement, and research. This segment will cover why do we need asthma research? I'm Dr. Michael Pistoner, an allergist at Mass General Hospital for Children. I'm here to talk to you about the importance of patient engagement in research and how you can help researchers ask the questions that are important to you. Together, we can improve the lives of people in our community. After watching this video series, you will have a basic understanding of asthma, be able to recognize some of the common symptoms and triggers, and learn more about uncontrolled asthma and asthma attacks. You'll also understand why it is essential for those with asthma and their caretakers to be involved in asthma research. After watching this segment, you will understand research basics and why it's important for people with asthma to get involved in research. Research can feel a bit complicated and be hard to understand. Let's break it down a bit. If you look at the definition of research from the online Merriam-Webster dictionary, you'll see it described as a careful or diligent search or a studious inquiry or examination, or collecting information about a particular subject. Asthma research also searches, investigates, and collects information. For example, asthma research may search to figure out different causes of asthma, investigate the effects of asthma on patients, follow people with asthma over time to see how they do with different medicines, treatment, or lifestyle changes, or study and collect information about different treatments. Asthma research has helped to explain why there are different outcomes in different populations of people. Researchers use what they learn to suggest the best care for different ages, genders, and races, ethnicities. Patients, families, and healthcare providers use research every day to support and improve the lives of those with asthma. They can find out about risk factors that cause differences and spread ideas that can reduce those differences. By working together, researchers, patients, families, and healthcare providers can find ways to reduce the impact of asthma. Here's an example. Asthma research taught us that African-American and Latino children living in some urban areas have higher asthma rates, more symptoms, and more deaths than white children do. These imbalances could be due to the type of healthcare treatment available, poor housing options that allow more exposure to allergens and trigger asthma, and or the stress of living in certain locations. New York City is taking steps to promote healthy housing. Advocacy groups encourage the city's lawmakers to pass the Asthma-Free Housing Act, which would require building owners to routinely inspect for asthma triggers, it would require building owners to use responsible ways to address trigger causes at the source instead of superficial repairs. It would require landlords to tell tenants about asthma triggers and how to fix them. And it creates a system so doctors can recommend that the city inspect a patient's housing to find and fix asthma triggers. This example shows how results from one area of asthma research that looked at where someone lives can influence changes in policies and treatments to help improve asthma rates and reduce tragic deaths from asthma. Results from this research could be significant to many of the nearly 25 million Americans with asthma striving to live a life without limits. Explore more in our video series on understanding asthma research. This presentation has been brought to you proudly by Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America with funding by the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, PCORI.